Welcome to my workshop, my name is Tomasz and you're watching Casual DIY channel. Today I just want to mention five items, five tools that are by all means not essential in a woodworking workshop or even for a DIYer, however they will definitely greatly improve the performance of your tasks and just ease your life a little bit. So let's start with the first one. So the first tool is a square, but not like this one. That's an essential tool. Everybody should have a square. Now I've got this one from Empire and it's been with me for absolutely donkeys of years and it served me well. However, when I got this precision square from Vaco, it absolutely changed the way how I was using this tool. It's so much better to use it, more accurate, and it gives you a lot more possibilities. Now with the normal square, you know, there's no ledge on it, so if you've got a thicker material, you need to control and hold your square. Whereas this one, it has a ledge, just like that, so you can rest it on your piece of work, and it's stable, you don't actually have to hold it, and you can make your marks, no issues at all. Either of the sides, you've got markings on both of the sides. Um, over here, it actually starts from zero, with not all squares, it does start from zero, so that's very important. But of course, it will also start from zero on this end as well. Plus, the holes in the middle here, they are every one millimeter increments, so you can do uh, horizontal lines as well. So it's an ever so simple tool to use, but it makes a world of difference when you compare it to a normal square. Not essential, but definitely life quality improvement. I do actually have a full on video about this precision square. Uh, so I'm gonna drop a link down below in the description of this video so you can go and have a look if you are interested in this. Don't get me wrong, it's not woodpecker's quality, but also it's not at the price of woodpeckers. Definitely worth picking up, in my opinion. The next non-essential tool on my list is a depth gauge. Uh, this one's from Trend, I've bought it years ago, probably about four or five years ago. Recently, I got this digital version of it as well. Now, this tool gets super handy when you're trying to set up the depth or height of your router bit, for example. And that indicates straight away with high precision at what height my router bit currently is. Obviously, if you've got a digital one, it's even easier. Because you can see exactly at what height it is and you can really adjust it to your needs. And there you go. 5 millimeters, absolutely perfect. On top of this, this digital version actually has got magnets, so if you've got a cast iron um, router plate, it's even better. For me, unfortunately, that's all aluminium. Uh, but yeah, if you've got a cast iron one, that will work for you even better. However, you can just use a ruler for this job. It's gonna be a little bit more awkward and hard to do, but that's where it comes the non-essential part in these tools. Same thing applies for your table saw blade. If you're doing a rebate, anything like that, you can dial in your blade height to a millimeter. Very useful tool. On top of it, it can be very handy when you're trying to mark your work as well at a certain depth. For example, I've got two centimeters. I butt that against the edge of my work and create a mark just like so. Obviously, you can repeat it as it will remain the same distance every single time. Now, before we're gonna to go to the next non-essential tool on my list, I want to ask you, uh, what do you class as non-essential tools that you would actually recommend to anybody else that is just starting woodworking, DIYing, or, you know, been in the business for a while now. Sound off in the comments and let everybody know what are your picks for the non-essential tools. Now, the next tool on my list 
is the digital level finder. I've got two, one from Trend, very basic, and the other one from Aquamaster with some additional uh, options. However, to be fair, I never actually used them. And as the name <laughs> suggests, they are very good at finding angles. However, how would you actually use these boxes? Well, I'm gonna show you in just a second. So the first example I want to show you where these little boxes come in super handy is when you want to set up your table saw blade. A, check if that's at 90 degrees, if you want to do straight cuts, or if you do want to change it to a different angle, 45, or not a standard angle. So let's give it a go. So the level is at zero with the table. Whack it to your blade. And as you can see, I need a bit of tweak on my table saw blade. But let's say I want a 60 degree angle. Dead on 60, perfect. Let's set it up back to 90. This time, it's a perfect 90. Similar thing applies with your miter saw. If you want to set up your blade to the table at 90, or if you want to make a bevel cut, for example. You can set up the desired angle with ease, not having to measure anything that will tell you exactly where you are. Now, obviously these boxes have many other uses. You can measure different types of angles on different objects and it will tell you exactly where you are. And because they are digital, it's really easy to read. Now, why they're not essential? Well, there's other tools that you can replace this with a normal angle finder, a manual one, that would be maybe a little bit cheaper. I'm not certain, because these are actually not that expensive. So uh, I'm gonna leave some links to all these products I'm gonna be showing today down below in the description of this video. But let's go to the next one. The next tool I want to show is a set of calipers. Now I've got this manual one, I also got a digital one somewhere, <laughs> not sure where. Many people actually forget about this really simple tool, but it's ever so helpful in a workshop. Now, for example, if you're not very organized like myself and you just drop like your forstner bits or drill bits and when you need a specific size, for example, five millimeters, and you've got a bunch of them, you can use calipers to tell you exactly what diameter they are, okay? Same with some bolts or screws, you can check them out, see exactly what size they are, super useful and helpful tool. On top of it, you can, um, on the mic for example, you can check um, how something is um, wide in size, so for example, in a circle or in a channel. On top of it, and mine comes with a depth gauge as well, okay? So it's a very handy and useful tool that you really should think of purchasing one if you don't have one already. Calipers number four. Now the fifth one is a health and safety thing, but also life improving quality item in the workshop, okay? So hearing aid protection. In my opinion, in a workshop, is an absolute must. However, the one I've got is with um, radio, stereo radio. It comes on batteries and I can listen to music while I'm sanding for hours upon hours or just using any other tools in my workshop. So the feature of having music in these is actually quite handy. As I said, when you spend a couple of hours on sanding, it gets really boring and repetitive. And if you've got the ability to listen to something, it gets a little bit more manageable, okay? So uh, these ones, they're not very expensive at all. However, I probably would recommend you to get the Wi-Fi version, which is a little bit more expensive, but I find myself that uh, the radio not always plays the music I want to listen. And if you've got the ability to actually connect um, your hearing protection uh, to your phone and listen to exactly what you want, <laughs> like podcasts, it doesn't have to be music, then they would be a lot better. But yeah, number five, hearing protection with the ability to connect it to your phone or just listen to some music. So that's my five non-essential items that will help you in your daily tasks in your workshop. A precision square, depth gauge, digital angle finder, calipers, 
and some fancy hearing protection. Now all these items can be replaced by something different um, that will still do the job. These are just very good at it, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Not essential, but they will definitely help you out. But I'm super curious to see what are your options, what are your tools that you class as non-essential but are absolutely improving the workflow in your workshop or maybe the quality of life in your workshop. So sound off in the comments. I definitely am very curious to see what you've got. Now, if you're interested in purchasing any of these items, I'm gonna drop some links down below in the description of this video so you can go and have a look yourself. Um, and also, if you're interested in projects around workshop, jigs, and everything else, I've got a really cool playlist that should pop up just over here. Go and have a look at those videos, and uh, I'll see you there. Take care.